YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Well, I should say Destiny 2 is Shadow Keep video. Yeah, folks, we have some new gameplay and footage and information regarding going back to the moon with Shadow Keep this September. Look at this void rocket launcher. That's got to be exotic. This thing is littered with little Easter eggs and uh, tidbits and whatnot, which I'll cover in a separate video. I'm going to play this full thing out at the end, but I want to chime in on a few things. So this morning, I put up a video going over the, uh, well, teased power cap, which I think is going to be 900 power. Also, some returning exotics. Uh, this big scarlet fortress called the Keep. That's going to be the focal point of the moon. And also, we were speculating on what the enemies are. Well, they're going to be the hive. They actually say in this video that the scarlet fortress, the big center piece in the middle of the uh, moon, is going to be run by the hive. Now, the hive do look a little different because they kind of have those little red spiny things coming off their backs here and there so kind of a new version of the hive kind of like how with Mars we had the frozen hive or this is just me speculating of course but it seems like we're gonna have some new sort of hive over on the moon now the fallen are gonna be there and one of the cool things they discussed is that some of the things that we were used to seeing that we did not have access to will have access to like there's a fallen catch that we were used to just well roaming around and farming for helium filaments if you remember back in the day but now we can actually go into there and explore and supposedly the fallen are on the moon trying to rebuild their fallen catch or rebuild something over on the moon so it looks like the fallen and the hive will be on the moon but they do say that Eris Morn she arrived on the moon and she awakened some sort of darkness now that begs the question is this kind of uh, gonna be the send-off to leading into Destiny 3 that's yeah, been a big point of contention within the community recently is hey is there going to be a destiny 3 uh, i think vgr vga.com or something published an article saying 80 percent of destiny players do not want a destiny 3 um where did you pull those stat numbers from please <laughs> i'd like to know i don't know i get a feeling this is going to be the final year for destiny 2 and this will lead into destiny 3 so it wouldn't surprise me if this darkness she awakes uh could be the pyramid ships i don't know we'll find out but i'm gonna let it roll out right now and you guys let me know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section. All right, guys, leave me a good old hashtag made it to the end if you made it to this point in the video and do me a favor. Drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream. Usually you know it's on YouTube, but that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir. There's something about the moon. It fascinates us. It haunts us. And now it's calling us back. And going back to the moon started as a bit of a passion project. We want to see, can we take this destination and really stand it up alongside all the rest of the destinations we've made in Destiny 2. So how can we bring back the moon with a twist, make every player realize that it's a moon but with something new on it? Shadowkeep, the moon is entirely changed. It's completely remastered. There have been a bunch of different changes, both large and small, for players to kind of experience on their own and find. We have about double the amount of space. There's more than twice as many places you can go. You've been here before, but it's not the same. The main thing that drove us was the idea of what if there was a hive castle right on the surface. But we were trying to go for something that, was, that felt really imposing and really threatening. It's very spiky and red, which just kind of makes it feel more aggressive. This is the Fallen Catch from Destiny 1, and it's actually kind of resting on the surface of the moon, and the Fallen are basically making a new base using pieces of the Catch. They're basically just trying to survive. There's a bunch of new lost sectors in the destination. This is one of the spaces in Destiny 1. You couldn't really go inside of it, but in Destiny 2, we kind of let you get deeper into these structures on the moon. It's meant to feel like you don't really know what you're going to find. You're not really sure how to traverse this land. On the art side, it's got a completely rebuilt skybox. Every space has top to bottom new lighting. This is actually the first space that we relit. In D1, the lighting is a little bit more clean cut. We went with a lot more saturated colors in some spaces, but in D2, we were trying to give this feeling of desaturation and general spookiness. We wanted it to feel a little bit more mysterious. We wanted it to feel a little bit of that what's in the shadows. Well, we're definitely um, respecting a lot of the secrets that started in D1, and we're exposing those and digging into them a lot more. 
We open up the game with a cinematic, taking us back into the moon with a character that knows the moon better than anybody else. Eris is, in a way, the catalyst. She's the one that woke up the beast. Imagine that we're gonna have like a layer of that, you know, dust and a little bit more of that rockiness on there. So when she does reach out to it, it'll wake up. Reacts to it when she touches it. Exactly. We actually just caught that moment for the first time with a lighting test. Eris discovered something under the surface of the moon, a hidden darkness. There's so much we don't know about the moon. I think a lot of this release is, is about mystery. One of the things we really liked about the moon in Destiny 1 was that it brought in this element of spacefaring and the height of humanity, right? The height of where we landed as humans before the collapse. So there's a lot of stories that we're telling about the history of humanity here. The people that built the accelerator, the people that built all these structures on the moon. Like, what happened to them? Where did they go? We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. One small step for man. Landing on the moon in real life was a gargantuan achievement for humankind. We're coming up on the anniversary of that accomplishment. We want to pay respect and kind of like homage to that, uh, that moment in human history.